Okay, we're back, and we're, we're, you know, we're talking about what has God revealed about our lives that we can, we can begin to, to allow that scriptural knowledge to filter down to our heart, that then we can pursue the work of God and see God show up in some amazing ways. And in doing so, hopefully we're, we're also letting go of some hindrances, things that belong to the secret will of God that don't serve us to, to sit and ponder too much. There's a place to be prayerful about it, but not letting us, not keeping us shackled. And so we arrive to another aspect of what God has desired for us. Um, and that is in Ephesians 5. Okay? We're going to look at verses 15 through 21 at another God's will statement. And let's go ahead and read 15 through 21 together. Look carefully how you walk, not as, as the unwise, but as the wise, making the best use of time because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that's debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in hymns, spiritual songs, seeking, uh, sorry, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always for everything to the God, the Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in a reverence for Christ. probably caught it there. Uh, verse 17 talks about understand what the, the, the understanding, understand what the will of the Lord is. Understand what the will of the Lord is. So in here, as he, you know, he kind of makes reference to God's will. But notice that the, the impact of understanding it, understanding means that our walk should be different. And it's what we've been talking about the whole time. And he starts off by saying, look, that you, you look carefully then how you walk. Not as the unwise, but as the wise. You almost hear echoes of Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of the sinner, nor see, sits in the seat of the scoffer. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. So the word guys are walking, not to be like the sinner, the scoffer. And the thing is that even those who've been saved, it, there's times when we, you know, maybe we don't let that mind of Christ well in us, and, and we do walk unwisely. We, we look more like the foolish, and maybe even sometimes like a scoffer. It's interesting, you know, I remember, uh, you know, going through seminary, um, taking a systematic theology class, learning about the, the doctrine of the sovereignty of God, and then living life a, a different way, right? I, I was getting all these details about how God is, is overall creation, he sustains it, he, there's like, not even like a speck of dust falls without his knowledge. He knows the number of hairs on our heads. Right? We, we know those things, and yet how I live, sometimes we're very different. It's almost like I'm scoffing at God. Like, God, you're clearly not really in control of this right now, are you? We need to dwell upon his word. So it may help us know about our days that we're living in. Again, you know, all these verses, it's kind of like that, that um, gem, uh, the scriptures, is kind of like a, a, um, a, a gem that, that you, you know, as you turn it, like a diamond, that's what I was trying to look for, I was looking for, a diamond, as you turn it, right, it's one object, but as the lights come through, you see different aspects of its beauty. The scripture 
is like that. You get similar truths in different parts of Scripture, but, but as you turn it, you get different aspects. And I use that illustration often, I, but I, I probably not necessarily in these sessions, but um, I just think it, that it's just, it gives us such an illustration, visual, of the beauty of how Scripture comes together for a unified picture of how it impacts us, how God has spoken. So it's supposed to help us as we're in these days that are, that are evil. There, there is, you know, they, they, they're going to end, right? Death is facing 100% of the human race. The things that men do to one another, the, the rebellion in man's heart against God is lived out on a, on a horizontal level. And so we're called to be different with that understanding of the knowledge of God. So, how do we do that? How do we let this understanding take control? Well, we arrive to, to needing the Holy Spirit. Um, and, and do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Okay, the Holy Spirit, who is He? He's the third person of the Trinity, is one of the simple things. And it's interesting, in this verse we have each member of the Trinity represented. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit um, are mentioned throughout these verses. And we're going to see that as we talk about God's will, each member of the Trinity is involved in working in our lives. So, and it's like this, uh, you know, and I don't have very good vision. And so, like, if I hold my hand up, right, that, that could look like one object. Um, it's kind of like a mountain range. As you're driving off in the distance, it looks like one huge mountain. That's how the people of God were viewing God early on. There's hints of a, of a trying nature of God, but it's not very clear. But as God drew near, as, as man was brought near, distinctions were beginning to show. Yes, God is God. He's outside us, and He's the one that creates. There's more in common. There, you know, these, there's so much in common that they're, they're one entity. But yet there is distinctions between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so the, the Spirit comes and lives with us. And, and particularly, you know, he, was with, he was always with God's people in the Old Testament. But with the coming of Christ and his death and resurrection, he, he left and sent another counselor for us. And that's the Spirit's role, to be a counselor. And like I've already talked about, he's a, he's a seal here in Ephesians. He's a seal in our life that, that we've been purchased by God. But even that, you know, he's a, he's a seal in our life. But how, but how do we see more of the Spirit at work? That's kind of the question. And it's God's will the Spirit's work to be ever evident in your life. And He's going to help you live out what God's will is. And so that's what I believe these next um, kind of, they don't fall completely into verses. Verse 19 has two of the things that, that we do on a human level and then see the Spirit work. And then we have verse 20 and 21. So 19 has 1, 2, 20 has, verse, has the third point, and then uh, fourthly, the uh, verse 21. So we see addressing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. It's interesting this text says addressing. It's not actually singing. It's not saying you can't, it's not singing. What, what I think that Paul's doing here is that, that, that these are scriptural truths, they're, they're sacred truths, and we're addressing one another in them. As much as when we're coming to worship together, it's about God, as the Spirit dwells among us, it's testifying to each other. Like as the Spirit groans within one of us, He groans all more when there's more of us gathering together. And, you know, 
there's testimony and as we're addressing God and, and so much stuff is going on in our life and, and another believer sees that, it, it, strengthen, it strengthens them. And, and so, now that we address one another with scripture, right? We, 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 we give these testimonies of how God is working in our lives. And God doesn't do it just for our single benefit. He does it about more than yourself. And so that's why we, we don't want to, it's not for boasting that we do this, not boasting ourselves, boasting, oh, look what God has done for me. No, it's, it's boasting in God. For the, the comfort that he's comforted us with can be a comfort to others. And we can then see and take the work with others. So the first one is how do we see the Spirit at work? How do we work in line with God's will to see the Spirit show up more in our life? As we gather with fellow believers. We worship with other, worship with other believers. Do life with other believers. So that's everything from meeting in our house to house to gathering on Sunday morning. And everything in between as we, we have the opportunity to serve and work with our brothers and sisters. But secondly, you know, there's times when we're alone. And I think that's why he, he then says, Sing and make melody to the Lord with, to, with your heart. Singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. I think this is, it seems like it's linked, but I think it's, it's its own prepositional phrase. It's, it's, it's saying, you know, no matter what you're in, maybe you are alone, maybe you're alone working in the field, you're, you're um, doing the dishes, you're, you know, all these different things that we have in our life that I can talk about and take up all our time together, but whatever we're doing, it's coming across the, our, our paths, our paths, we can sing in our heart about Jesus, even difficult things. Again, that's just that, that, that theme that I've been trying to weave throughout this, is that this cannot touch, whatever this is, cannot touch the joy we have in Jesus Christ, the place that he has secured for us. And so, that's actually the spirit of work, right? Because that, man, you know, I, I just got laid off from work today. Where am I going to go? Where are my thoughts going to go? Where am I going to spiral? Or am I going to choose to make melody to Jesus? Don't you see how the Spirit's working in that? Even like you know, my first point, talking about us coming together. You know, there's many things that we could rub each other, and um, <laughs> we may not want to come on each other. And the Spirit's working through that as we take steps and say. Yeah, you know, maybe that was a little bit of annoyance, but I'm going to look past that. See how the, the Spirit's working in the, the human relationships? Again, it seems like, okay, that point one, point two, point three, it, it continues to get more personal. It goes from um, one another to interpersonal. And so we have that... that this impacts our prayer. We're giving thanks always and for everything God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we're making the melody in our hearts, singing to Jesus, we're also taking time to, to be still and knowing that God is God. Thanking Him for Jesus Christ. I think it, it just has that, that stillness of knowing God is God. Taking the time to, to, consciously, uh, to, to consciously thank Him. Because sometimes, you know, we can do it in the moments we're driving, you know, God, thankful. But, you know, it doesn't really hit until we're alone and still and give those things to Him. So then, lastly, is, that, is how we respond to one another. So I think it's almost like a starts out with others, point two, um, you know, ourselves, point three, ourselves, and then it comes back out, and it, it's again, again about one another. It's, it's kind of what they call a sandwich that's uh, going on here. Again, you know, submission. 
Adam and Eve were not able to submit to God and not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Ramification of, of the fall, we don't like submitting. Husbands and wives don't like submitting to one another. They don't like living out the, the requirements of the, of the marriage covenant. We don't necessarily like um, submitting to our bosses. We don't like submitting to our parents. Right, that's, that's tied to, well, God gave me my boss, God gave me my parents, God gave me my children, God gave me my spouse. But God, I don't want these. I want this. That's, because God, I feel like, you know, now I know the spouse, this one will be better. These children, eh, you know, let's try again. Um, if I was my own boss, things would go better. And so on. And that's our hard attitude sometimes. If we, if that's kind of raw. We don't, maybe don't talk in those terms, but, but when you boil it down, that's what sometimes we're saying. We're, we're shaking our fists at God and, and saying, God, the problem is this, what you gave me. Yeah, but, you know, the Genesis 1 through 3, it, they are great lenses for understanding our daily lives. And so, again, to see the Spirit's work is submitting, choosing to serve that person's interests. Maybe, you know, obviously, be not, not every interest, right? That, that they may be sinful in some of their desires. But you have a mind. God has gifted you. Be creative. Think through how can I show honor this person in spite of what they're doing. So, God's will is for us to have spirit-driven corporate worship, prayer, and submission. How about that for start, you know, <laughs> hitting us where we're at? Think you can do that today, a moment, even now, as we talk to one another uh, in this Q and A time and discussion time? Yeah, this is something that it isn't way out there. It hits us where we're at. So again, it's like a funnel, right? We, we, may, we may have been. You know, the Spirit has involved us, but He hasn't necessarily filled us completely. And so, you know, he, we, we just see the Spirit filling us through that funnel, transfer, trans, um, what am I trying to put? Just really changing how we go about our lives. And it does take work. And I think that's sometimes the, the hard part. We often think, that the spirit is kind of like a, a, a zap and it's done. But it, it takes faith the, and, and walking in the ways that we, we, we know that God's revealed and then trusting God to supply the power through the Holy Spirit for them to be accomplished. So, again, this is stuff that, you know, we've probably heard at different points. But we need to make a, a discipline of pursuing this work. I can't make a discipline. I mean, even as I'm up here talking, I'm thinking, man, God is so good to, to tell us this. It's like a doctor telling you, a, a giving you a diagnosis. It's not maybe that's the diagnosis you want to hear, but it's a diagnosis. So that means there's a treatment and there's a path to recovery. I know that's not true always with the type of diagnosis we get, but this particular God's diagnosis is are that way. So again, join me as we, we just close this session in, in a word of prayer. O oh, Father God, Father of lights, who, are, who all good things come from, come, come from heaven to earth. We're thankful for your Son to come down and, and then sending, that you both send, sending, uh, sent the Spirit Father, we're thankful for the Spirit. We're thankful for the people you have us around, the circumstances that you have us in. We know that you haven't left us and forsaken us in them. And instead, you're, you're going to use them as a surgery. 
They're going to reveal things that at first are going to not seem that great, but then there's going to be beauty. And so, Father, grant us the faith to pursue this work, pursue the Spirit through our, our, our worship, our corporate worship as we come together, as we do life together, as we make melody to Jesus as we go about our days, as we pray the Thanksgiving and, and, and the beginning and close of our days for all things, and then how we, we, we submit to all those people you, you bring in our paths. Uh, to you be the glory. Amen.